Okay, um, we're back again. This would be the, uh, fifth part. <clears throat> Alright, we were going to start where we left off the other day. Um, they were kind of, she, he was kind of, uh, you know, invited over to stay, because, you know, he's a runaway. Uh, basically, at Lisa, basically where she is, which is basically a church and everything. So, I guess we'll see what happens next. Maybe we'll learn a little more about the, the mystery girl, who we, we do not know actually her name, because uh, what they've told is, is not her real name. Uh, I don't know if we'll t learn about her name or what, but let's find out what happens. And right after that, she said, at, right after she said that, supposedly there were only Lisa and Hagana here, so logically it must have been Hagana. Yeah, that makes sense. Only two people. Unless there's someone who you don't know who's there. Else. Someone else is there that you don't know. So there was no reason to be surprised. But I did get a shock when I spotted Hagana coming in from the dark hallway. Panties! Panties! <coughs> Why is she walking around in her panties? <laughs> no wonder he was shocked. She's walking around in her freaking panties. <laughs> Hey, Hagana! Lisa got up hurriedly from the sofa. The Hagana in question squinted her eyes, wearing a surprised, puzzled expression. In her hands were ridiculously neat folded pajamas and what looked like a change of underwear. But what got us all in fluster was her appearance. Yeah, she's. She's basically in her underwear already. I mean, does. I see she has some straight panties in her hand. I wonder if the game, I doubt they're going to show us again when she actually puts on her new panties that she's actually wearing. It's one of the things I've noticed about some of these visual novels is sometimes they are not very accurate in their descriptions all the time. But this one seems to be hopefully, you know, pretty alright in its description of she has panties in her. And I guess she's has folded pajamas. She was wearing short shorts that revealed her slender, long legs all the way. So those are supposed to be shorts? I thought they were panties. But if those are supposed to be shorts, those are some very short shorts. <laughs> but I guess, you know, sometimes, you know, there are those panties that are... I guess there's panties out there that kind of look like shorts as well. I really don't know very much about female underwear. But I guess there could be. Maybe someone who does know can say... Her slender long legs all the way up to her hips, and a sleeveless shirt through which you could almost see her chest. I can see a little bit of side boob right there, right below her armpit. Just a little bit of boobage right there. You can kind of see it. <laughs> Haven't I told you many times never to wander around in something like that? Isn't it fine since it's not showing? She replied, surprised at how angry Lisa was, and went quickly into the changing room. It looked like Lisa couldn't figure out what to say and simply growled in front of the changing room door. As for me, to my great distress, I averted my eyes and thought, her panties are white, so I guess they are panties, but I guess you could call them short, so they're, they're what I thought they were panties, they're just a little, not super, they weren't a thong or anything like that. That was oddly childlike compared to the color of her clothes and her ridiculous cheekiness. I don't know, I don't really consider white panties childish. I think they kind of look nice. Just... White. I don't really wear white underwear myself. Well, it wasn't bad. But seeing that kind of underwear beneath her totally black stockings would kind of be a letdown, I thought to myself. I noticed Lisa glaring at me. <laughs> Erase that from your memory! <laughs> I could have just brushed it off by laughing at her, ridiculously serious face because of her scary glare. I nodded twice obediently. Sheesh, because she's so hard-headed. Lisa sighed and shook her head. 
Even though it looked like she had all the power here, she had no way of controlling Hagana's thoughts. It really did seem like Lisa's hobby was to shelter runaways. That was fine, but I felt inclined to show her respect for her words. It was a strange thing. You try to show at least a little shame too, okay? It was the first time I've ever heard that in my life, but I nodded. I possess manners that would lead people to think I seriously wanted to distance myself from the crude culture of my home village, where people who couldn't get naked in front of people of the same gender were considered cowardly. However, Lisa waited for my nod and added an additional line. I'm looking forward to your manners the next time we eat. Ah. Uh, oh, she also changed his name to Hall. Basically gave him a nickname, for the most part. What a cheap move, I mentally yelled at Lisa. I guess in the end, this lady was the type to take you by surprise if you let your guard down. Lisa was laughing merrily as she returned to the sofa and started playing with her multifunctional terminal. I had already taken a bath, but I wasn't quite sleepy yet, so I sat on the floor at once and opened my PC. A bit awkward afterwards, there was a quarrel between Hagana and Lisa. I gotta figure that since we were facing the other way and engrossed in what we were doing, she could just walk back to her room with only a towel on her shoulder. Whereas Lisa tried to push her back into the changing room. Was she naked? Is that, is that what you're trying to say? She was trying to walk out there naked with just a towel? And that's the image I'm picturing in my head. <laughs> Does she want you to see her or something? <laughs> Lisa was frantic, saying that this had been a place with better manners before, but I thought perhaps it was a warmer place before because it was just two females living together. I felt that I had come across a great place. Even though we had separate rooms, they were, they were well cleaned. If helping people out like this was a hobby, then this unhealthy interest in this church thing and this crucified man was probably also not that bad. Morning. The first thing I did was confirm that I could survive another day. I figured I'd inspect my things and decide to look for the bag I was clutching before. But when I realized it was gone, a shiver went down my spine. But no, his stuff, where's his stuff? I pranged to my feet. But when I realized that I was in a bed, I suddenly remember what happened last night. This wasn't a booth in a dodgy internet cafe, but a house connected to a church managed by a strange woman named Lisa. She does have some strange things to you, but I would say you're just as strange in a way. <clears throat> it had been a long time since I'd been able to sleep in a place where I could stretch out my limbs. It wasn't so bad to wake up without being in pain. Good morning. You're up early. Still in the worn out old clothing I borrowed last night, I walked into the living room where Lisa was sitting in a corner with a computer. Looking at the book like organic display, it didn't look like she was just messing around. Except for Sundays, I usually get up around now. You're pretty disciplined for a one away. I'm impressed. It's none of your business. Of your business. Lisa shrugged her shoulders, turned back to the display, and hit a number of keys before standing up from her chair. Do you ma do you want breakfast? Judging from your name, your parents must be Japanese. Oh yeah, you already told me that. I wonder if I have any rice. Even with what she, even with that, she said, I didn't really have an appetite. That's all right. I got a chocolate bar in my bag. I want some coffee. When I said that, Lisa looked surprised. Her beautiful almond-shaped eyes widened and seemed frozen in place. As long as my eyes have a black in them, I will always try to have three real meals a day. Your eyes aren't even black. <laughs> it's a figure of speech. 
I looked away in disdain like a spoiled brat. In the end, Lisa prepared some bread, bacon, and eggs. A long time ago, the folks on Earth couldn't have imagined journeying beyond their planet and still being able to eat the same thing that there that they did at home. In other words, they imagined food to be some strange colored supplement in a tube with who knows what kind of bagly food-like nutrients in it. Well, when you see, you know, a lot of movies and other things like that, you know, sci-fi movies or anything in spaceships, that's kind of what, you know, that stuff has. Tubes full of gunk and other shit in it you eat out of. So I guess, you know, hey, real food on the moon. I guess it's not that bad. Sure, you can find stuff like that, but immigrants were surprised to find out that things on the moon's surface seem really no different from Earth. I didn't think too much about it. Do you have a net connection here? To me, a net connection was more important even than a silicon dioxide factory producing fresh oxygen. Theoretically, no matter where you were in this lunar city, you should be within range of a wireless signal, or so the plan was originally. For areas where the cost, benefit, performance, and maintenance wasn't high, if the relay station broke, things would just stay that way. Beside, if you looked around, you could find public institutional terminals free to use, so places with no wireless reception carved out the area like Swiss cheese. If I couldn't use the net here, I would have to find a place like the Big Bull Cafe again. However, I was hope hopeful because the computer Lisa was using was connected to the endless sea that was the net. What? Are you some kind of net addict? You know, in a way I could say I'm kind of addicted to the internet. I'm always on the internet. Always on the computer. Given that, I also slept at that Neff Cafe. I suppose you could say that I was. However, as I turned on my mobile PC, I was lost as to how I should respond. I wonder why they call it a mobile PC. I mean, in, in my opinion, what I'm envisioning in his computer that he has is more like a laptop or something, in, in my mind. I mean, him saying mobile PC just, just sounds weird. Mobile PC, it's like very old. Like, you know, you got the, nowadays you got tablets and everything. Maybe tablets weren't out when this actually was released or they were a new thing. So they didn't come out with the idea of the, per, the person who wrote it, wrote this, of using t the word tablet or something like that. Because, you know, mobile PC just sounds stupid. In my opinion. I mean, I would, I would, in my opinion, I would be like, I would just say it's an old PC laptop or something. Because that's basically what a laptop is, a mobile computer. Tablet. Nowadays, ta basically a tablet is a mobile computer, just with touch screen. I mean, even your cell phone is basically a mobile computer. So much you can do on that, sh on that stuff now. It wasn't against the law to say that I was trading stocks as a miner. From that point of view, it wasn't a problem to just say so. The problem was that I was raking in the cash by normal standards. Even for the sixth outer s section, this appeared to be a lower income area. Did the inhabitants here earn about 1,000 moles a month? 2,000 moles? Not yet. Did anyone here hold down any steady work? It wasn't very clear if this church had any money. A good poker player never shows his hand, or so they say, so I should assume that they had some hideaway monetary reserves. I lowered my head like a turtle as I spoke. Something more important than even a name, perhaps? Lisa didn't even persist to ask my real name. Persist in asking my real name. At my words, Lisa's hand slowly stopped and she looked right at me. Looking at her calm but displeased face, I was ready to say that I was enraptured by the pursuit of money. It isn't anything illegal, right? At the words that come out after that were those that I was sure would let me off the hook. That is definitely not the case. You have my word. In that case, I won't ask about it. That was unexpected. Lisa seemed to mouth those words a number of times. She smiled in slight puzzlement as she spoke. 
Boys are creatures who died without secrets. In my heart, I screamed out against being treated like a child. Were my lips to move, I would sound like a one. I chose to stay silent as I logged in my trading accounts. Those thoughts had long since been expelled from my mind completely. My concern toward, turned towards the up and down movements of digits and the flow of money you referred to. Nice. Just, you know, the way he's making money just seems really boring. Stare at a screen going up and down money. Just, in my opinion, wouldn't be very interesting. It'd be one boring ass thing. The market had fallen into disarray. One particular market on earth was shaken up and its repercussions were felt by the financial markets that tied the world together. Apparently it was something about Russia sending forces into satellite countries because of natural gas fields. Typical stuff. The conclusion of the Cold War that brought the world together happened in an instant. After the panic of nuclear weapons in a small country in the Caucasus region, dubbed the second Cuban missing crisis. Mankind finally took a real look at the situation before them. Although the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of the actions that led to the end of the Cold War, it was also a confrontation between superpowers. In the second Cuban Missile Crisis, it wasn't a confrontation between superpowers that brought the world together, but a confrontation between anarchic terrorists and the countries of the world. His job was the complete cooperation of the world, and there to look toward the stars in preparation for another such movement. Moment. Everyone knew that there would always be disputes when it came to the utilization of land on Earth. These issues would be pigeonholed into a faraway place above and away, literally. With the development of the space elevator, major technological breakthroughs were made at breakneck speed during the development of lunar cities. However, just as evidently as Evidently, of all memories fade over time, the moon strayed from the original goal as the world's utopia. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like a utopia at the moment. I mean, it seems like kind of a rundown place from some of the description that's being told. Just it doesn't really seem like it's that great of a place. It just seems like it became another extension of Earth more or less. After being firmly established, much like countries all over the world, it sought sovereignty and independence to the extent of maintaining its own independent military force. Most of the countries on earth turned the gaze from the sky to the ground again, having awoken from their dream. This was the gist of what I understand about the history of the world. I knew more min minute details beyond this, but delving too deep would make it difficult to see the big picture. My knowledge was entirely tied to stock trading after all. If there were to be a disturbance in some regions of such some country on earth, it would probably have a large impact on the people who live there and the corporations which operated there, but it would have a little it would have little global impact. And because there'd be little global impact, tragedies would continue on earth. This is something that immigrants from my town, who were coming there from particularly dreadful places on earth, had said which had left the biggest impressions in my mind. Looking down at the earth from a, the space elevator, I could see that all the dreadful problems out there grew smaller and smaller, much like the place of my birth. Even to this day, there were places on earth where missiles fell more than rain did. That is a lot of missiles, I guess, if you're trying to describe it that way. Either that or it's all you're describing an area which doesn't get much rain, but gets a lot of war. There was a rise in the number of unskilled laborers wanting to come to the moon, especially those who no longer wanted to live on Mother Earth anymore. The real kicker was that the people of the developed world seemed to know absolutely nothing about the world outside of their borders. Here, everyone more or less knew about these rising problems when it came to Zen Jack Bunch and their stubbornly was resolute mindset, what was hidden eventually became known. Their mantra was, we will not allow this to become another earth. It was a great concept, more of this. If nothing else, I like to continue to partake in free handouts like that. Ha! <sighs> it's 
strangely. Even when I was completely focused on stock trading, the more I concentrated, the more another part of me started waking up. It felt like I had two personalities within, within me. When I sighed after completing my trades, it really did feel like I logged out of the world of the mat. It was the feeling of the two halves of me joining back into one. In the warp speed pace of stock trading, it was like the... My button. Ah, oh, happens all the time. My finger is always on that button. No, no touch, Mike. No. It wasn't all that bad, at least until I reevaluated the results of today's trades. I've been glued to the screen since morning without stopping to eat or drink, and I was up over 7,000 mools for the day. If there were smooth days, things would go the way they did today and continue at this pace. It's been nerve wracking calculating how things would go from last week. I could feel the fatigue in my body as I fell over from my crossed leg sitting position and lay down. Da 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 da. Only in this moment was my mind blank. Even in my dreams, I've been handling financial transactions, so this moment was probably more relaxing than when I was sleeping. Even the most effective leaders on earth holding on to their hegemony were said to spend anywhere from a few minutes to a maximum of an hour sleeping. I was very aware of this. If I were to plan my conquest of the world, it would be unfathomable to waste time sleeping. After all, someone somewhere in the world was working, continuing to effect some change, hence sleep meant to slip a small fraction from the forefront. Even for the glow of conquering the stock market, I had to partition out the limits of my brain capacity, thus total control of thought. However, one day I will conquer the market, extract endless amounts of money from it, and pile it all together to reach out. And journey to undiscovered lands, opening the door to the next destination for mankind after the moon. It was like I stopped my brain cells from relaxing and filled my disconnected brain with a new, seething blood flow. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes, ready to get up in one motion. What stopped my movement in its tracks along with my thought process was purely an accident. Da 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 da. Oh, what's gonna happen? Purely an accident. When I opened my eyes, everything in front of me was all pitch black. No. Or rather, it was a pitch black cloth. One part of it had a unique and continuous contour to it, while another part appear to be zigzagging layers of plates. What the hell? It's for some reason I'm thinking of something bizarre. I wonder what it is. Let's find out. And beyond that I could see through a break in the black fabric of what appeared to be some sort of white fabric. Don't tell me. I, for some reason, I think she is sitting on his face or something. That is what I am picturing in my head at this moment. That Hagana is sitting on his head. Or something like that. But why? That's what I'm picturing in my head. For some reason, this description... That is the first thing that came to mind. It passed nimbly over my head. What came next into my vision was Hagana's face, as if she noticed something suddenly and turned around. Why did you open your eyes? Are you an idiot? Those were words that didn't seem out of place, even if you append it with that. She wasn't acting shy or embarrassed, and apparently she wasn't even angry. Instead, Hagana looked disdainfully at me. Maybe she wasn't sitting on Maybe she was just passing by and he just happened to see it. Like it dragged against his face or something like that. Maybe I was going to think a little bit too much that she would be sitting on. I don't think she would be going that far. It was probably a bad idea to have lain down to rest right along the shortest path to the kitchen from the living room. But even then, shouldn't I got to be more careful wearing something as defenseless as a skirt? Hmm. So that's probably what happened. He kind of saw, you know, up, up her skirt. But then why is she, why would she be walking so close to him? That, you know, when he woke up, it'd be like dark. 
Maybe she's teasing him or something. Besides, her lack of shame would make even mannequins look inhabited. Just thinking of that made any advantage to the situation a bit lacking. But that I doubt, finding any excitement in the contents of Hagana's skirt seemed rather like a losing proposition. I'd like to stay a rational person, if possible. That was why I got up and returned to my computer screen. Where is Lisa? I hear Agana's voice coming from her direction, so she had a white mustache around her mouth after drinking milk. <laughs> Which certainly was quite a feat in nutritional intake, and more amazing that the chemical synthesis that created it. Like I'd know. After having her make a fool out of me, on top of having that idiotic white mustache on her face, I found myself rather irritated. And my rather short answer, Hagana showed her disapproval with a raised eyebrow. Haven't you been here the whole time? Why don't you know? Are you an idiot? I started feeling like every sentence she spoke would have those words tagged silently onto the end. It was true that I'd been here the whole time, but I did not notice her getting up and leaving me behind during my deep concentration. I considered explaining that to her, but I found it to be so annoying that I just disregarded the thought. And in doing so, I heard the darndest thing from Hagana. Humph! I guess she's got. I guess she's mad. She does look a little pissed there. Oh. I was surprised. In fact, you could say that it was as if my brain shorted out. For a brief moment, everything was blank. I turned around and just looked at Hagana with a what expression on my face. Hagana looked back at me without any expression on hers, seamlessly saying that I was nothing but useless garbage. These two don't seem to get, you know, to be the most friendly with each other. They seem to have gotten off on a very bad foot, and it seems to have be continuing. Well, I'm going to have to cut it short tonight, so uh, I'm going to end this one here and save it. But um, we'll continue to see what happens next after this little confrontation that's going here between these two. Um, thanks for uh, watching, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, feel free, there's going to be more episodes of these up, and uh, we'll see you again.